the Atlantic is more than ever the main street of the Western world. At one corner of Main Street is the great naval base of Norfolk, Virginia. Here, around Chesapeake Bay, colonial America knew its first roots. Here, aptly, the New World safeguards its present-day links with the old. For in addition to defending the American continent, Norfolk today shoulders a greater responsibility. For within its limits is the headquarters of NATO's Supreme Allied Commander, Atlantic. In the great map room of Sackland, as it is called, you meet not only with the expected Americans, but also with naval officers, British, French, Canadian, Norwegian, Danish, Dutch, and Portuguese. For should war come, this room would be police headquarters of the entire North Atlantic Ocean. By agreement, the office of Supreme Commander is filled by the American Admiral, who is CNC of the United States Atlantic Fleet. But his business is concerned with many other shores than just those of his own native land. His NATO command extends to the Azores, the Straits of Gibraltar, the rugged coasts of Portugal. France and its great bases of Brest and Cherbourg. It covers the vital western approaches to the British Isles. It reaches out to that very North Cape that is the farthest tip of Norway. Then the Denmark Strait and the seas around Iceland, Greenland, and Labrador. Its westernmost edge, the whole seaboard of Canada and the United States. And between these limits, over millions of square miles of rolling, restless ocean. Today, the Supreme Commander's overriding concern is with the very real threat to the Atlantic sea lanes by enemy submarines. The sub of the 1960s is a true underwater animal, staying submerged if need be for weeks. It is capable of launching nuclear missiles onto land masses and then of disappearing like the proverbial needle into the haystack. And of this proverb, the haystack is of no mean dimension. 